So recently on Minimedic, I had a patient who jumped into a pool, but he landed on his back on the side of the pool. I'd show you it, but it got me banned again uh, for about a week. And yeah, let's review that. So if you don't remember exactly what the vital signs were, let's go ahead and take a look. So here on the vital signs, we have a hypertensive patient, 220 over 110, heart rate of 52. And the only other thing that appears to be abnormal is this SPO2 of 90. Well, and the temp's a little bit abnormal, but not worried about it. Now, a lot of people in the comments were jumping to neurogenic shock. Now, be mindful with neurogenic shock. Your patient's gonna have widespread vasodilation. As you gotta remember, this is considered distributive shock at that point. This patient has high blood pressure. So what can cause hypertension with a spinal cord injury? Let's talk about it. So the condition that this patient was experiencing was known as autonomic dysreflexia syndrome. Now, this occurs when there is a fracture of the spinal cord or damage to the spinal cord anywhere above T4 to T6 uh, in that thoracic spine. Now, the interesting part about this injury is that it basically causes a sympathetic response anywhere below the actual fracture or damage to the spinal cord. Everything above that spinal cord reaction has the opposite effect. Let me explain. So the sympathetic response that occurs below the injury actually causes widespread vasoconstriction and will also bring up the patient's blood pressure. Systolic scene over 200 or diastolic scene higher than 130 can be found. Now this severe hypertension activates something called the vasomotor center within your medulla and your brainstem and actually activates a parasympathetic response. Due to this, your heart rate will lower, and also anything above the fracture, all the blood vessels become dilated at that point. How will these patients present? Again, anything above T4 to T6, it's gonna be vasodilation. So the patient will have flushed skin and they will be sweating. Now, the appearance below the fracture is gonna be pale and cool to the touch due to the vasoconstriction. Now, with regards to actually treating this patient in pre-hospital settings, there's not much we can do. Obviously, this patient has suffered from spinal cord injury, so considering spinal motion restriction is a given. Follow your local protocols, and if you're able to, vasodilators might be in play here. For those of you who did say that you would use something such as nitro paste, not a bad idea. Remember, follow your local protocols. Hopefully this helps.